to lesson six. This is the final lesson for, for this uh, MIS 6110 Management of Information Systems course. In this lesson, as a final lesson, we're going to talk about a few additional concepts that are sort of uh, uh, broader concepts related to technology and information technology as a whole. The first thing we're going to talk about is knowledge management. Knowledge management is one of those newer terms that has evolved over the last decade or so to mean a number of different things. And I think it's important that we define in this particular section, even though we're going to talk more in detail about it, what is knowledge management? We really deal with three primary things within information technology. We deal with data, and a definition of data is, uh, is a little bit of a, a broad concept, but data are those numbers, letters, statistics, raw material that goes into a particular system. For instance, if I have an accounting system, then all of the, the, the physical invoices and dollar amounts, etc., make up the data portion of that. The next piece is information. And we often define information as organized data. That is, bringing the data together in such a way that it provides a mechanism for decision making. Because in the end, information is really about making a decision or making decisions related to the data within our environment. So information is organized data. Data is, of course, housed, managed, and controlled within an information system. Information is also housed, managed, and controlled within an information system. And again, we're going to talk about what some of those are. But at this point, it's important to understand that those are pretty much technology-based environments. Knowledge, on the other hand, is not either of those two. Knowledge takes information, systemic-based information, utilizes the experience and expertise of a person to create an outcome which we call knowledge. That is, I can produce, uh, I can produce a report out of a financial system an annual report or some other means, a, 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 an accounting report that gives me very specific information about the organization. But if that information is not interpreted and understood and, and processed by an individual who has specific experience with the industry and the meaning behind those numbers, then the information itself has really very little value. And so knowledge really is the process of taking this codified controlled and managed information and creating something that is a basis for making solid, sound decisions, which is a person, experience, and knowledge. From an IT perspective, uh, we, we really have control over only two of those three components. We do have control over data and information. As I said, it's codified, it's managed, it's controlled. Knowledge we don't have control over. So the concept of knowledge management is the ability to take that knowledge and convert it back into data and information. So how does that work? If you consider within your individual organizations, for example, that you have specific knowledge about your job that perhaps no one else does, and you leave the organization for whatever reason, you take that knowledge with you. And reproducing that knowledge in a new person may be difficult and create some impacts as it relates to productivity and other kinds of impacts. So if I, as an IT person, can somehow pull that knowledge from you or codify and, and, and get some of that knowledge out of your head and put it into a system then the next person that comes along will have access to that knowledge and be able to create their own specific knowledge more quickly without the loss in productivity. So that in a nutshell is knowledge management and all of the activities associated with knowledge management and the whole scope of really the, the chapters that are focused on knowledge management in your textbook, the whole focus is how do I pull that information, knowledge, out of your head and get it into a system or into an environment where it can be utilized by others and it, it becomes more of a controlled asset 
versus the knowledge in your head, which is really an uncontrolled asset. So again, that distinction between data information and knowledge is important. And the concept of knowledge management, of course, is grabbing that information and making it useful. Why is all this important? In the end, every activity that occurs within the organization at some point comes down to the ability to make decisions. From a management perspective, if I don't have the, the necessary information at my fingertips to make a good decision, <clears throat> then any decision I make is really based more on a guess than it is on the, a real world kind of a, a dis, uh, well, made based on a guess and not a real, uh, a real strong or clear uh, definition of what the issue is I'm deciding on. We have multiple levels of decision making. If you consider that from an organizational structure perspective, even if you remember back in lesson one, we talked about the pyramid related to organizational structure. At every level of that pyramid, from the very top to the very bottom, various types of decisions need to be made. From the very top, I could be deciding whether I want to uh, sell the organization or acquire a new organization. I could be making decisions based on legal activities or uh, even on strategic direction as it relates to new products or those kinds of things. And even at an employee level at the very bottom, making daily decisions on how you do your job and how to be more effective in doing your job. All of those kinds of decisions are daily types of activities that, that require some form of support. In technology, in the IT setting, we have a number of different systems that provide some of these services. For instance, a decision support system, a DSS. A decision support system takes the available data and information and allows you to do what we call data mining. <coughs> data mining is essentially the process of pulling out specific pieces of information from various sources in order to produce a decision tool that gives us a very educated mechanism for making a decision. In many cases, you'll see decision support systems that use dashboards. We use the term dashboard, which are often graphical representations of different activities within the organization. So we know, you know what is our current sales? What is our current accounts receivable? Um, you know, how many products are we manufacturing? What is our quality consideration as far as how many defects and those kinds of things are being produced as a result of our manufacturing effort? So again, those types of systems provide a, a more data, more knowledge, or more information back to those responsible for making those regular decisions on a daily basis. So decision support systems, DSS, are often used throughout the scope of the organization from the very top to the very bottom. There are also executive support systems, which, very similar to a decision support system, provide those kinds of uh, data elements to, to the very highest level of the organization, the executive level. An executive support system, for instance, would provide more broader market information. So for instance, if I'm in the healthcare setting and I want to know, uh, for instance, what are, the, what are the current activities related to other hospitals or health centers in my market, that information would be available at an executive system level so that I could make sort of broader executive level decisions on the course of the organization. Those kinds of systems, again, are fed via collection of data and then aggregation, or aggregation collection of data and then processing of that data into the sound information. But again, pulling knowledge management back into this, it's all about interpretation in many cases. So while the information may be the same, I still have to interpret, or I still have those that interpret that information into knowledge, and they may interpret it differently. The more of that interpretation I can get into the system, the less variance, for instance, I have in interpretations, and the more consistent my decisions become. So that's really the ultimate goal, is to figure out a way to develop a system that creates output that will allow for consistent, common, um, and, and systematic decision making within the organization. So the last piece I really want to touch on is the use of collaboration or collaborative systems. We talked a little bit about 
uh, in previous lessons. We talked about various systems that provide services to the organization and the ability to, to meet the needs of the organization through implementation of technology solutions. We just talked pretty extensively about knowledge management and some of the decision-based systems used in the knowledge management field. But collaboration is an entirely different concept from that perspective. Consider collaboration or collaborative systems providing the ability to allow a project team to work together on a particular project without having to be geographically centered. There's a number of collaborative type systems out there that provide this service or provide this capability, but they're not as broadly used as you might think. In the age where travel is extraordinarily expensive and productivity loss associated with travel becomes even more of an issue, the use of collaborative systems you would believe or you would think would become more broadly used. Even a, a, simple, a simple communication tool that allows you to share a desktop or to look at each other's uh, data, video conferencing and audio conferencing technologies are not as broadly used as you might expect. There are many, many new collaborative software applications that have been introduced that provide this via both voice and video uh, and data sharing across a geographic location that are becoming more popular but still have a long way to go. From a decision perspective, if you consider how many decisions are made in a, in a vacuum within an organization, those number of sort of individualized decisions are shrinking pretty rapidly. Most decisions, most projects, most planning nowadays is done via a team. And so the ability to collaborate among that team and not necessarily be in the same geographic area is extraordinarily important. Within our classroom setting and within your reading, you will see a variety of different examples of these collaborative systems, uh, both voice, video, data, etc., that are available uh, in a broader context. So as I said before, this is lesson six, and we have essentially uh, ended the uh, six-lesson program for this course. Today we talked a little bit about uh, knowledge management. We talked a little bit about the difference between data, information, and knowledge, and the purpose of knowledge management as far as extracting that knowledge back into the systems. We talk a little bit about decision-making systems, DSS, decision support systems, and executive support systems. And as I said, there are a variety of others, but we touched on those specifically. And then a little on collaboration and the importance of collaboration as it relates to the organization. So this concludes Lesson 6, and it concludes the uh, video summary of this course.